Okay, imagine going to a conference where you're about to present a really important paper. You're super excited, everything goes well, especially because your discovery rewrites our understanding of Newtonian physics. The word groundbreaking might not be even enough to describe this. And with something like 5 sigma standard of your results being correct, you now might have a chance to maybe win a Nobel Prize, because you've just discovered something absolutely incredible. Everyone's super impressed, huge success for you as a researcher. Then, the next guy comes on stage and seems to have found pretty much the opposite with even more significance. And the evidence that the new speaker presents seems to be very difficult to argue with. So yeah, what do you actually do in that case? And though this might sound fictitious, in theory this is actually exactly what's going to happen during one of the MON conferences where several speakers are going to be presenting the results. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this relatively new study that actually was not particularly popular at first until the relatively recent press release from a small Korean university sort of made it go viral with everyone in astronomy basically talking about it. But the thing is, we're not really discussing the study itself, but the topic as a whole. Because, as you'll learn from this video, we actually have no idea who's correct in this case. But before this, let's set up what the problem actually is and what various scientists are trying to solve. This is once again an attempt to solve the idea behind dark matter, a strange phenomenon that we know exists, but whose actual origin is kind of difficult to explain. Now, there have been so many different attempts to solve this and to try to explain it one way or another, but the main explanations today involve either some kind of a super difficult to detect particle that seems to be everywhere, and by the way, it potentially is difficult to detect because it's just extremely low in mass, or maybe something needs to be rewritten about the model we have of the universe, and maybe we actually have to rewrite the fundamental gravitational formula, actually Einsteinian formula. Maybe something is missing from Einstein's equations, and maybe something here just doesn't really work well in certain conditions around the universe. And that's despite the fact that in just the last 10 years, there have been hundreds of different attempts to actually disprove Einsteinian theories, with all so far actually failing. And this is one of the reasons we often see articles online that basically state something like, Einstein proven right again, it looks like gravity does work the way we think it works. But there could still be a chance maybe we don't really understand everything. And the most famous idea challenging Einstein and Newton is known as MOND, Modified Newtonian Dynamics. The idea that began as an explanation for galactic rotation curves, but that then started to be expanded into the rest of the universe as well, trying to explain a lot of other phenomena we observe. And the thing is, this is where it gets super super complicated, because even though just modifying the formula does explain certain galactic curves in certain locations, trying to explain everything else we observe in the universe, according to Mond, would require ridiculously complex modifications and something that goes way way beyond just simple invisible particle. And more importantly, the evidence was just not there. Now there are actually several scientists out there that are strong proponents of Mond and have been trying to prove it for many many decades. And the Korean scientist that wrote this recent paper seems to be one of them. But the problem is there's also quite a lot of papers challenging Mond and succeeding at pretty much disproving everything. But whether the mod is correct or not, well, it's really not what this video is about, because here we're going to discuss a slightly bigger problem in science. Something that's actually become a huge issue in the last few years. Just for fun, I googled astronomers find, and just look at the titles here. They find a new stellar object, they find an object no one has ever seen before, they find a planet that shouldn't exist, so quite a lot of somewhat clickbaity titles. But the thing is, in most of these cases at least, the actual discoveries were somewhat real. Maybe not as groundbreaking as the title makes it sound, but still real nonetheless. But on top of this, we also had titles like this. Scientists confirm major breakthrough in nuclear fusion. New research doubles universe's age to 26.7 billion years. Harvard astronomer hunting for UFOs on the ocean floor may have found something. And of course, the biggest of them all, superconductor breakthrough could represent biggest physics discovery of lifetime. Huge claims that were either disproven almost right away, like with the LK99 superconductor, or claims that are going to be eventually disproven with time. Although for that fusion claim, it's really more of a representation of what it's actually for. I mean, we're talking about a weapons research facility, not something that's trying to create clean energy. But anyway, the main concern here is that the sensationalism in science has actually reached a completely new level of absurdity. We've reached the point where it's very difficult to tell what's real and what's not. Which is actually ironic, because in the last couple of years, I realized that several science communication channels, including technically I guess myself, 
have now started to slowly become debunkers, not really presenters of new discoveries. I mean, I've watched quite a few videos from Joe Scott, for example, who now has several videos where he basically challenges all of this. Same thing with Kyle Hill, and even more so with channels like Professor Dave Explains. And that's really because of all of these unusual claims coming from everywhere. And so when I see an article like this with the title Smoking Gun Evidence for Modified Gravity at Low Accelerations from Guy Observations of White Binary Stars, one of the most reshared articles in the last couple of weeks, it sort of makes me go, huh? What? What exactly are they talking about? And why is it that I think this is maybe not really exactly true? And the reason I'm saying this is because right before I read this article, a couple of months back and even three months back, I read separate articles that seem to actually basically state the opposite. And so I guess the question is, so how exactly should we approach these articles and who do we basically believe? Well, the obvious answer for scientists would be time will tell. I mean, obviously, as Carl Sagan said many times, science is not just the body of knowledge, it's the way of thinking. Here, you actually wait for results, confirmations, and maybe further studies, or even meta-studies, trying to actually find out what's going on. But if you just want to read one article, and if you don't want to bother with the whole scientific process, what do you do then? That's right, you subscribe to this channel, that's what you do. Okay, on a more serious note, well, basically here what I would do is ask a simple question. How exactly did scientists come up with all of these conclusions, and is there any chance that maybe they miscalculated something, or maybe used data that's not really good? And so here, let's actually talk about the articles first, and discuss the potential conclusions. And so first of all, all articles I'm going to be discussing were actually based on pretty much the same data, to some extent. And here we're talking about some of the most incredible data coming from the iconic Gaia telescope. This is basically as good as it gets when it comes to observations from our own galaxy. Now, Gaia Telescope is really good at detecting motion of various stars across the night skies and has now actually released data three separate times. The most recent release from July of 2022 revealed so much new data that we can now actually start making relatively accurate calculations and predictions even involving stars that generally do not look like they're moving much. And that actually includes binary stars or even multiple star systems that generally do not move at very high velocities, but whose motion can now be detected with Gaia. And the thing is, apart from galactic curve motion, in the past both Mond and a lot of other theories proposed that we can actually use binary stars as potential evidence for some kind of an unusual gravitational effect when it comes to modern understanding of gravity. Although here we're not really talking about binary systems where stars are relatively close to one another. We're actually talking about what's known as white binaries, binary systems where the stars can be separated by up to several thousand astronomical units, with a single orbit potentially taking thousands of years. And according to Mond, for example, it's actually in these systems that we can now start detecting variations in terms of the orbital motion that's going to be different from what's expected from either Einsteinian or Newtonian gravity. The actual math in here is pretty well understood, and so it becomes a matter of getting evidence and trying to match the evidence with observations. And so, for example, for our own solar system, we should actually start seeing various effects predicted by this idea at a distance of about 7,000 astronomical units. Obviously, we haven't found anything at these distances in the solar system just yet. But by looking at various other systems from a distance, it might become possible if we actually collect data for hundreds, thousands, or even millions of stars. And that's, of course, where the data from Gaia comes in. It was able to collect quite a lot of data from various binary systems, data that's publicly available for anyone, to start making first conclusions. But the intriguing part, of course, is what these three papers seem to claim. The Korean paper claims a huge evidence toward modified Newtonian dynamics, using a sample of about 26,000 white binaries, and also claiming relatively high significance, basically implying that it is most likely correct. But in this case, many of the binaries selected by the authors seem to have stars with very far away distances, up to 30,000 astronomical units. But also some stars that have a relatively short separation, technically not really being white binaries either. Likewise, a lot of the stars here are not true binaries. Some are triple stars, some are quadruple stars. And by itself, this actually represents a kind of a strange sampling. I mean, I'm not saying it's cherry-picked, but it does seem to be a little bit unusual. And then we have this paper that also came out just a few months ago that pretty much used a very similar data available to everyone. Here they used an even bigger sample of 73,000 candidates, with all of the candidates selected using a relatively robust system 
with every star basically being a binary, and a very specific type of a white binary, that was meant specifically for testing the idea behind MOND. And so the two scientists from the Queen Mary University of London relied on a much more robust analysis and discovered literally the opposite. And not just the opposite, they also have more significance, here it's 16 sigma, essentially proving that Newtonian-like gravity seems to be correct, whereas MOND seems to be completely incorrect. And this is not even the first time the scientists behind the study tried to do this. Last time they have a bit of a mixed result, but they also used much older data. With the new analysis and the new data, this study makes a really strong case against modified gravity. But to make things even more complicated, we have a third study, once again using data from Gaia, and once again using a relatively similar analysis. Although once again here, the star selection is slightly different. And here the study seems to discover something in between. It discovers that a lot of predictions from MOND are incorrect, but it also discovers some kind of a non-Newtonian low acceleration that implies we need to re-examine certain ideas and certain theories when it comes to gravitational studies. So we have at least three studies with somewhat poor results. One proving something, one disproving something, and one telling the other two studies that they're basically both wrong. All three studies rely on the same data from the Gaia telescope, but of course choosing slightly different stars or basically sampling things a little bit differently. And though this particular study that discovers no violation of Newtonian physics seems to have the most robust sampling, the reality here is that we actually still have no idea what's going on. Honestly, none of these studies prove anything or disprove anything, for one simple reason. Even though we can actually calculate the motion of stars relatively accurately, it's not the same for binary systems. When it comes to binary systems, the velocity of these stars around each other is ridiculously low. Here we're talking about velocities as low as nanometers per second and orbits that can be in different inclinations, different orientations, and of course not entirely circular. So there's just too much unpredictability and way too many factors. Likewise, as I mentioned, some of these objects are not true binaries and are actually multiple star systems where things move differently as well. Some of these systems might be falling apart, some of them might have stars nearby influencing everything, and the biggest issue of course some of them might just need to be observed much longer in order to establish true velocities around the galaxy. And so even though by itself Guy is able to detect velocities pretty accurately, when it comes to white binaries, you actually have to observe things much, much, much longer in order to find the exact velocity. It's basically kind of like why we don't really know exact velocities for a lot of different objects at the outskirts of the solar system. We normally have to look at objects for several months or even several years, before we can find their exact orbit. Something similar is happening here. Here we have a preliminary observation with a pretty high confidence that we did discover different binaries, but we don't really have high confidence for the exact velocity of the orbital speeds for each of these stars. Which means that these types of claims are actually wrong. There's maybe some preliminary evidence for something going on here, but definitely no smoking gun evidence for anything extraordinary just yet. Especially because papers like this with better sampling and even better analysis, literally have the opposite result. And so at the moment there's just not enough data. It might take at least a few more releases from Gaia, possibly 4 to maybe even 6 years, before we actually have enough data to start making some preliminary conclusions about this, but at the moment this is not enough. As a matter of fact, ultimately you want to observe these stars for at least a hundred years or so to actually detect direct orbital motion. We don't have anything like this yet. But because everything today is about sensationalism, and because today being a rebel is kind of cool, and we do want to prove long-standing theories wrong, it's studies like this that tend to go viral, and studies like this that tend to basically disappear into obscurity. Although for all we know, maybe it's that third study that's actually onto something. Maybe there is something going on with the gravity we don't understand, or maybe Gaia has some kind of a fundamental error in it, unable to make extremely accurate measurements of certain objects. So yeah, there's really no answer. I'm really sorry to end on this, but at the moment it's basically impossible to make any conclusions about anything. We obviously want to solve this whole dark matter mystery, and we want to find a conclusion that makes sense for everyone, but based on these papers, it's impossible to make any specific conclusion that will definitively tell us what's going on. Here I can only make one assumption. They're all maybe kind of wrong, or at least to some extent. And so only maybe in about 10 years from now, when we get even more data from Gaia, we might finally have some closure on this and figure out what's happening or how exactly some of these scientists came up with these particular results. 
for now though, I'm just gonna end it on this. I have no idea what's going on, nobody knows what's going on, and sensationalism in science needs to kind of stop, because unfortunately it results in people then distrusting science long term. And that's not cool. You should trust science. It's the way of life. Anyway, so we'll come back and talk more about this once there's maybe more data, more explanations, someone else uh, comes up with something else that disproves or proves something. Right now I'm just gonna go make a sandwich and wait for more studies to talk about. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.